No mai, haere mai, ki tu tato whare. Basically, welcome to our, our house. And K. Mila Bocha, and welcome to our honoured guest, uh, T.D. Jack Chambers, Paula Hara, who's the Deputy Head of Mission, and of course the Ambassador, Jane Conlan. Um, it's always so lovely to be here um, uh, and join you, particularly at the special occasion. I wasn't able to be here last year, uh, for some sad personal reasons, so it's lovely to be able to be with you this year and to, and to mark St. Patrick's Day with you all. Um, and um, yeah, as I was say, I won't go on about the darts. Uh, suffice to say that my husband did go and buy a dartboard after he played darts. <laughs> <laughs> so he's taking it very, very seriously. <laughs> so just to put you on. Just to, well, yeah, I, mean, I think that's a fair comment. Um, I, won't, I won't repeat it, but I think it is a fair one. Um, so just to put you on notice that he went and bought a very big one. <laughs> Um, as you as you all know, um, it's now a tradition in Ireland for ministers to, to leave Ireland during St. Patrick's Week and go around the world to um, our you know, key countries, key partnerships, to visit our friends abroad. And part of this is to acknowledge um, the Irish community abroad and everything that the community abroad has done for um, Ireland as it is today. I mean, we are a, a prosperous country, a safe country, a, a good country to live in, and a huge, a lot of our success, a lot of our progression is down to all of the work the Irish community did abroad um, uh, to, to promote Ireland. Um, and I know that I used to say that before, probably one of the reasons why it took us so long to open an embassy here in New Zealand was because you were all doing such a fantastic job uh, for us. <laughs> it took us a well while to convince uh, that we actually need to come here uh, and be here as well. Um, so the fact that this is only the second time a, a minister has come since the opening of the embassy um, seems a bit odd to be able to say, but it is a testament to the importance that we do attach to this. It's a, you know, it's a long way to come, um, but it is a very, very important part of the world for us. It's a very, very important relationship. Ireland and New Zealand have a very, very special relationship. So uh, this really is sort of a reflection of how much we value that relationship. Uh, we have a very, very broad program which really reflects the kind of the depth and the dynamism, dynamism of the Irish community and the relationship that we have. So as Desiree quite rightly said, it's not here to listen to, 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 to us to us speak. Um, so, just again, to say thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this evening, and it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Minister Jack to Mr. Edwards. Thanks so much, uh, Ambassador, and just to all of you, it's it's fantastic to be here. It's a great privilege uh, to join with you all, and I suppose the first message is just to share our appreciation for what you've done over so many years in keeping that connectedness and that togetherness and the promotion and celebration of all things Irish culture. It was wonderful to speak to many of you uh, from all of all, with your roots right across our country. So both my parents are from County Mayo. It's good to see Mayo representation here. Uh, and uh, born, I was born in County Galway and I think there's Galway representation here as well. Uh, and many, many other counties uh, across uh, our country in Ireland. But uh, as the ambassador said, uh, that that dynamism and that, that strength and that promotion of our, of our culture and our connectedness has been ongoing by yourselves for so many years. Um, and we're really keen as a country now, uh, as, a, as a country that has changed. I think when Mary McAleese was here as president, she spoke, I suppose, the sadness of how our country was always defined by those who had to leave uh, through emigration. And that spans right the way back to the 1800s and indeed the 1900s where people uh, that, that defined our country, where we were defined by the people who left our shores and who did so well and contributed to so many countries and economies abroad, uh, close and far. And uh, now we're we're like, very similar to New Zealand in terms of our outward-looking um, trading economy, and we share a similar similar value system of how we promote our diplomatic ties in the United Nations, a human rights-based approach, but also one that really tries to celebrate the sporting links, the cultural connectedness, um, and there's huge opportunities as well, which I've learned over the last number of days in terms of trade and business. And I know, despite our geographical separation, we have huge areas of commonality between our two economies, something we're really trying to deepen and strengthen for Irish companies that want to build their presence here in New Zealand, but also the opportunities with the new trade agreement for New Zealand companies uh, trading in, uh, in, in the European Union as well. So the relationship is one that will continue to be deepened and strengthened and hopefully uh, with yourselves we'll continue to celebrate Irish culture in every way and I think St. Patrick's Week offers 
uh, a true representation of that, to recognize and acknowledge what you've done to help each other in, in, in different and maybe more difficult times, the support that you give each other today uh, as, as a community. It's great to see the GA uh, uh, representation here, and but also all things culture, music, and, and that's something uh, as a government uh, we're, we're keen to support and promote. It really uh, is, is, is a true honour to see that and to see it celebrated in such a, a positive way. Um, and uh, you know, we, we want to do everything to strengthen that over the years to come. And I know the team in the in the embassy are are, are keen to work with you all uh, to to support everything that you do. Um, so thank you for your warm welcome. I look forward to meeting the people who I haven't met so far and uh, thank you for, for organising this evening. I hope you have a very uh, enjoyable St. Patrick's Week and St. Patrick's Day, so thanks very much. Already, and some children will do some poetry in about Today I'll be minutes. reciting a poem called Heritage by Augustus Young. One cannot possess the house until the death of a father until the old man, cutting a twist by the fire, fails to fill the bowl, lays down the pipe, or sometimes, luckily enough, shovels himself into the earth. You must not appear to own the place until the first grass covers the grave. Then you have it, and the land, one acre and ten of arable bog. But you cannot possess wife until your mother accepts the death, and in many a case, accepts her own. There is no choice. This is being a true son. Allow the country to die for you. Thank you, Karen. The Railway Children by Seamus Heaney. As we climbed the slopes of the cutting, we were idle with the white cups on the telegraph poles as the sizzling wires. Like lovely freehand, they curled on for miles east and miles west beyond us, sagging under their burden of swallows. We were small, thought we knew nothing worth knowing. We thought that words travelled the wires in shiny pouches of raindrops. Each one seemed full with the light of the sky, the gleam of the lines, and ourselves so infinitesimally scaled. We could stream to the eye of a needle. Woo! <laughs> by John Montague, for Patrick Collins. The sounds of Ireland, that restless whispering they never get away from, seeping out of low bushes and grass. Hear the bells and fern, wrinkling bog poops, scraping tree branches, light hunting cloud, sound hounding sight, a hand ceaselessly combing and stroking the landscape till the belly leans like the pile upon a mountain pony's coat. Prayer Before Birth by Louis McNeese. I am not yet born, oh hear me. Let not the blood sucking bat or the rat or the stoat or the club-footed ghoul come near me. I am not yet born, console me. I fear that the human race may, with tall walls warm me, with strong drugs dope me, with wise lies lure me, on black racks rack me, in blood baths roll me. I am not yet born, provide me, with water to dandle me, grass to grow for me, trees to talk to me, sky to sing to me, birds and a white light in the back of my mind to guide me. I am not yet born, forgive me, for the sins that in me the world shall commit, my words when they speak me, my thoughts when they think me, my treason engendered by traitors beyond me, my life when they murder by means of my hands, my death when they live me. I am not yet born, rehearse me, in the parts I must play and the cues I must take, when old men lecture me, bureaucrats hector me, mountains frown at me, lovers laugh at me. The white waves call me to folly, and the desert calls me to doom, and the beggar refuses my gift, and my children curse me. I am not yet born, oh hear me, let not the man who is beast or who thinks he is God come near me. I am not yet born, oh fill me with strength against those who would freeze my humanity, would dragoon me into a lethal automaton, would make me a cog in a machine, a thing with one face, a thing, and against all those who would dissipate my entirety would blow me like thistle down, hither and thither, and hither and thither, like water held in the hands would spill me. Let them not make me a stone, and let them not spill me, otherwise kill me. Well